Yo, how's it going everyone? It's Andrew Nakis coming in hot from my iPhone 6S and it's hooked up to the augmented reality uh, Apple's AR kit which I hacked into the GVR SDK allowing for switching to VR modes all with the same level of tracking uh, going into to the Google Cardboard mode as well as then switching back out to the augmented reality mode so in this uh, video we're just going to talk about this project just kind of as a whole um, where we see it going and how it relates to just the mobile VR AR industries as a whole uh, this project was built in Unity using the AR kit and GVR 0.85 SDKs um, so yeah let's just jump into it okay so I think one of the first things to say about the whole project in this scene is that this localization AR stuff so new it's pretty amazing at how good they have it tracking with just the narrow field of view smartphone camera I mean it's it's definitely pretty amazing as long as there's like high contrast points to track um, it just gets everything pretty spot-on now that's accurate enough for handheld tracking but when you get into the VR mode or specifically the AR VR mode I would say tracking is not really up to par compared to like the Vive or even the Tango. Um, and it's not as ideal f for looking through with the headset just because there's more drift and more micro movements. Um, but it's still pretty good nonetheless. Like it's not, it's not something where it's like, oh, you don't want to show people this period. You just, Apple might not approve this on the Apple store. Um, I, you saw I was just placing the cube around, and that now I'm placing the cube around now again in narrow VR. This stuff is in different location. You can't really see it, but I'm touching a different location to where the cube is going. That's because the a it's synced up to the AR view, which has a distortion versus this VR view. Um, ideally, I'd want to get that figured out for both VR, VR modes and then AR modes, which will actually have to raycast through the render texture. Um, but like overall, with the headset, if you don't have, if you can't experience this stuff, it's still like really good, um, and it's amazing. And I think hand, the handheld tracking is like perfect, almost, for, from a user perspective. And I'm excited to kind of dive into what it would be like to do kind of an AR to VR experience that like kind of switches between that and I think the air kit is perfectly suited for at least switching between handheld stuff um, and really excited to dive into it uh, so now we're just gonna talk a little bit about unity in the project okay so now we're just in the unity project downloaded from the git page um, we're in the scene gvr gv X AR kit scene and in this scene is kind of the entire project that can switch back and forth um, using toggling the AR camera and the GVR system which is hooked up right here on this head it's just child to the the main unity AR camera um, and then GVR main is also active and essentially when we get into the scene um, you can see if we switch from the VR, press the VR2 AR button to go from VR mode to AR mode, which this AR mode is just represented by a green screen um, using the Unity AR kit example scene editor ses, uh, settings. Hopefully this gets improved to like a more interactive editor debug environment, um, but right now it's just a green screen. When we switch from scene to, from view to view, um, what happens is the main camera, um, its child, the head object, which is the GVR camera get, rig, gets set active, and the GVR main also gets set, set active, which then makes this the main camera and takes them it also takes the main camera status away from the AR camera so then the this main camera renders which is the GVR camera rig so if we then press this VR toggle 
you get the stereoscopic view, which is this switching is being handled by the GVR.85 SDK. And so that's fine and dandy. If we're in AR mode, um, it just, again, everything goes back to this normal main camera. But then if we then toggle VR mode in AR mode to handle that, the main camera then loses its child. So the head, the GVR camera stuff gets sent away. It's actually like 100 meters away just to put it out of the way. And then it's pointed to look at this quad, which is set up to a render texture, which then gets rendered from the AR view. So essentially, if you're in VR mode for AR mode, it uses the, the standard GVR texture, but then sends it to a render texture, which then lets you view kind of this stuff in stereoscopic through the GVR headset which I think is a cool way because then you get all the cardboard profiles. Um, I don't know if the render texture is the most efficient way to do that. Um, and it doesn't pass everything perfectly, but I think it, will, it works. Um, so you can switch from VR to AR from there, toggle everything on and off. Um, all this stuff is happening under the AR camera, this GVAR switch script which is all just in here. Um, it's kind of documented. I mean, the basis is pretty simple. It's just those four toggles. VR switch toggles, the toggle for the, uh, the VR switch, and then switch is what switches the views from the GVR camera to the AR camera, and AR mode to VR mode. Um, and that's kind of the basis of it. Uh, it's a pretty simple project. It's on GitHub. I'm sure it's going to look different. Um, or uh, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to be making some updates that will probably change this and update this in the future with just, you know, Raycast stuff and just kind of playing around with what's, what's possible with like a chaperone system or uh, different sort of things just to make it so people could have a good environment in VR. Um, with this system because it's kind of exciting that every iPhone now gets the support for motion tracking with just one camera. It's pretty amazing. Okay, so just some closing thoughts about you know mobile VR as a whole, this project, um, and where I see all this stuff going. So I think first off, it's just downright amazing that the iPhone 6s, 7, and soon to be 8 in the fall will all support this technology. It's kind of genius from Apple's perspective, from an adopter perspective, to not kind of start with a new generation, but say like, oh yeah, every generation back. So two generations back. So 500 million devices now all support this technology. So there's instantly a market for developers. Um, I think that's amazing. I don't think they're going to actually support, like, for this hack that I'm doing with the GVR SDK, just going into, like, headset VR mode. I don't think that's going to be allowed in ARKit, uh, just because there's a huge liability issue without, like, a proper chaperone system, um, having a six degrees of freedom motion tracking in VR, like, people could walk down a flight of stairs or walk into something and get hurt. So I don't think that's going to happen. Um, but it's definitely, I think to some degree, the narrow tracking is going to be allowed and the augmented reality stuff is going to be amazing. So that's great. Um, it's interesting too because Tango and then to a lesser degree, Samsung has kind of said they're trying to compete in the AR space. They're kind of all now strapping up their boots and probably trying to integrate or the, hopefully they're trying to integrate narrow tracking into some of their phones. Like the, the thought is that maybe every 835 device and 821 Snapdragon devices are all powerful enough to run kind of narrow tracking. They just need the right software. Um, and Android Tango motion tracking is already available in um, NuGet, the NuGet SDK, but you need the required hardware. The thought is they may abstract that out so you don't need the required hardware. That would be kind of the hope in the future to catch up to Apple. Um, but overall, 
you know, it's looking really exciting to be an augmented reality developer because now there's kind of a very clear path to commercialization. So that's kind of amazing. Um, and as far as this project goes, I think, I mean, I definitely am going to be making updates and just playing around in the aerospace as a whole. I do think that there needs to be some sort of VRTK, but for AR, um, and there's a common language that I think, just like VR has a common language, AR also has a different common language, and it's obviously different handheld versus in a headset versus with pass-through uh, displays. And so I think the big thing is there needs to be a system that encompasses all of that stuff, uh, very much like VRTK. Um, so that's kind of one thought I was thinking about going. The other thought right now is just having mobile, kind of a mobile AR SDK that uh, abstracts all the iPhone stuff out and combines it with the Tango stuff. Um, and the advantage of this is that from a developer's perspective, the Tango developer uh, editor environment is like so much better because you can actually trial stuff out in editor mode and so that I think going into the future is going to needs to happen and I was thinking about doing that as well um, but overall I'm trying to make more videos around AR I think this is really exciting times um, everything's so new but it's finally there in terms of the consumer perspective and so yeah looking forward to hearing your thoughts and feedback and Definitely if you have any ideas, videos you want to see, um, let me know in the comments and I'm excited to make them. So, catch you guys in the next video. The future's here. Peace.